DaVinci Resolve, hands down, has the best color grading tools built in, but some are so good that they downright feel like cheating. So today, we're gonna cover three DaVinci Resolve tools that are so good that they feel like a cheat code. The first color grading tool that feels like cheating is the depth map. The depth map analyzes your footage and creates an alpha layer using the distance in your footage. This lets you select specific parts of your image and it makes changes to that selected area. You can create color separation, make accurate keys, add effects, and the list goes on. But let me stop yapping and let me show you how to actually use it. In your color page, just go to your effects, search depth map, and DaVinci Resolve will automatically analyze your scene. We could adjust these values using our map adjustment section, and with these sliders, we could select how far or close our selection goes. The white part is the part that's gonna be affected and everything else won't be. To clean up your selection, just go to Map Finesse, click on Post Processing, and this is gonna bring back a ton of detail to blend everything in. Now we could just create another node and connect our alpha channel, and on this node, we can make all our changes. Like for example, on this shot, I'm using the gamma wheel to bring up the exposure on the foreground to really separate it, and if I wanna make changes on the background, I could just add an alpha outside node and then I can make all my changes to my background and my foreground independently. So if I want to add a little more warmth in the background, all I have to do is move my gamma wheel and drop the exposure a little bit and you can see how much of a pop we get. You could also use this outside node to add effects to the background, like radial blurs. And because this is a depth map, you could make fake light rays and put it behind your subject if you just want to do creative stuff like that. But where I've found myself using it pretty often is to create color separation, but also to relight scenes. Like in this shot, I completely flipped the lighting because the background was brighter than the foreground, and I just wanted to change the focus. And honestly, just using this tool made that a breeze. The only downside of the depth map is that you can't use it on moving shots because it changes your depth information. But now you can see how much you could all the image and massage it to get it where you want, but what if you want to get a filmic look inside of your videos? And that's where the second cheat code comes in, the Film Look Creator. The Film Look Creator lets you get film-like grades on your footage using a couple of preset looks, but most importantly, it gives you access to effects real film has on your footage, like halation, bloom, flickers, the film gates, grains, to really just sell the look. But just to give you a heads up, this is Blackmagic's take on film looks, so they're not directly emulating any film stocks, but damn do they look good. But here's how to use it. I set up my my node tree like this. I have my exposure node, white balance node, my CST, and at the end I have the film look creator. To start, always white balance your footage. This is super important when using LUTs or looks because it makes sure that they work correctly and they look correct. There's a million ways to white balance your footage, but the way I like to do it is using my HDR wheels. I map them to my camera's color space and using the global wheel while looking at my vector scope, I push the information near the middle so the image is balanced. This is the look that I was able to get using the built-in tools, but let's walk through it on a blank one. Inside of here, we can find a couple of presets that you can scroll through, but we're gonna start off a clean slate. On the film look section is where we find our five different film looks that we can scroll through, but for this example, we're gonna use a cinematic one. To start, I'm just gonna increase the exposure a little bit and I'm gonna add a little contrast. Next, I'm gonna add a subtractive saturation and a little bit of richness. The richness slider increases the saturation in the most saturated areas without oversaturating the entire image. Now we can see that we already have a nice looking image, but to me, it still looks a little too cool for my taste. So let's use the white balance slider to warm it up a little bit. And since the image is full of warm tones, it's really gonna go really well with this footage. And just like that, we have a nice looking color grade. We could work our way down to the other tools to add more filmic effects. But for this one, I just added a little bit of grain to really sell the look. Using the same process, but with the vintage preset, we were able to get this split tone look on this clip instead. The only downside with this tool is that you can start introducing artifacting if you push your richness slider and your saturation slider too far. So just don't go nuclear with it, okay? And just like that, we're on our second cheat code. But what if I told you there was one more tool that simply just feels like magic? I'm sorry for the interruption, but I recently just dropped a sound effect pack named Rough Cut, and inside of the pack, you get a free sound design workshop that teaches you how to use your sounds literally, but most importantly, creatively. And because of your support, I've been able to develop my power grade named Retrograde. This power grade gives you three film emulations with just a couple of clicks, so you can just focus on creating. But enough of that, let's get back to the video. The last and final cheat code is the Magic Mask. And remember cheat code number one, this is its big brother. The magic mask lets you track your subject with a couple of clicks, giving you full control of whatever you have selected. You can create color separation, add effects, make keys quickly and accurately regardless of depth. And honestly, it's super, super easy to use. To use it, all you have to do is create a new node and click on the symbol that has the little guy in the box. Once you're in here, you just start clicking on the subject that you want to highlight 
And if you hit Shift H, it's gonna show you a mask of what you have selected. And once it looks good, you just click these arrows and DaVinci is gonna do all the heavy lifting to create your mask. And if you wanna clean things up, you could just refine your mask using the blur, the clean black section and smoothing. Now all you have to do is create another serial node connect your alpha channel to it, and then you could just make all your changes. If you wanna affect your background, you could just click this to invert your selection, and you're gonna be able to make changes to only the background. For example, if I wanna create a teal and orange look, all I have to do is go to my gain wheel, push it towards the blue, and it's gonna start creating color contrast. Or you could start going through your effects library and tossing them on there to add cool effects to the background, or your subject if you have that selected. And if you have your subject selected, you could add a contrast, you could adjust the exposure, you could change the colors, you could add effects, but those aren't the only cheat codes that DaVinci has up its sleeves. So if you want to learn a couple more cheat codes, but for editors, click this video right here and subscribe here if you want to see some more videos. But yeah, see you on the next one.